The Ukrainian offensive on the Kursk region of the Russian Federation was very fast and sudden. The Russians were forced to flee. According to the Wall Street Journal, the Ukrainian platoon encountered a serious obstacle to its daring incursion, a series of concrete pyramids designed to block tanks. They quickly destroyed one of them with three tank shells and then flew out through the gap in armored vehicles. The Russians, mostly conscripts, fled or surrendered. In two and a half years, Russia has not built a single line of defense, said a 33-year-old Ukrainian platoon commander with the call sign Yannick. Within days, Ukrainian troops had captured more than two dozen villages. The offensive shocked Russia and raised morale in Ukraine. Military analysts have questioned how sustainable Russia's advantage in manpower and weapons is along much of the rest of the front line. The rapid maneuvers are reminiscent of Ukraine's successful counter-offensive in the Kharkiv region in 2022. Ukraine's top military commander, Colonel General Oleksandr Sirsky, said 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory were now under Ukrainian control. During a visit to Kyiv, Senator Lindsey Graham called the invasion brilliant and bold, calling on the Biden administration to provide Ukraine with more weapons. By breaking through the border, Kyiv is trying to divert Moscow's resources from other parts of the front line where Ukrainian forces are under heavy pressure. But opening a new front risks stretching Ukrainian forces even further, the publication writes. Ukraine's ultimate plans are unclear, but whether Kyiv seeks to expand its incursion or to preserve what it already has, it will face trade-offs, said David Blagden, a senior lecturer in international security at the University of Exeter in Britain. The manpower, equipment and logistics requirements to try to support the invasion and then hold the territory once captured will be significant, particularly because of the lengthening supply lines, Blagden said. In a village near the Russian border, two Ukrainian soldiers who were waiting for orders to join the battle near Kursk said they had just arrived from the front line near Pokrovsk, where Ukrainian forces are under heavy pressure. Another soldier hopes the offensive will hasten an end to the war. He has not yet entered the battle, but said other soldiers in his brigade have captured four Russian artillery units. Two more have been killed and the rest have escaped. This is Russia's first war on its territory since World War II. Everyone was afraid of Russia, but we are showing that there is nothing to be afraid of, he said. Russia has prepared its fleet to launch nuclear-tipped missile strikes against targets in Europe. The Financial Times reports this, citing secret documents it has obtained. They say that the Russian fleet is trained to fire nuclear-tipped missiles at targets deep in Europe in the event of a potential conflict with NATO. Even before Russia launched a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, the military provided NATO officers with maps of likely targets, some as far away as the west coast of France and barrow in furnace in the UK. The documents show how Russia envisioned a conflict with the West and planned a series of overwhelming strikes against Western Europe. The secret documents, compiled between 2008 and 2014, include a list of targets for missiles that could carry both conventional warheads and tactical nuclear weapons. Russia has retained the ability to deploy nuclear weapons on surface ships, which experts say carry significant additional risks of escalation or accidents. The documents also note that the Navy's high maneuverability allows it to carry out sudden and preemptive strikes and massive missile strikes from multiple directions. Nuclear weapons are generally intended to be used in combination with other weapons to achieve Russia's goals, the documents say. The publication notes that the documents were provided by Western sources. Analysts who have reviewed them say the contents are consistent with how NATO assesses the threat of long-range missile strikes from the Russian Navy and the speed with which Russia is likely to resort to nuclear weapons. The publication notes that the maps were made more for presentation purposes than for operational use. They depict 32 NATO targets in Europe, the Baltic fleet's targets are located mainly in Norway and Germany, including the naval base in Bergen, as well as radar stations and special forces facilities. The northern fleet is expected to hit defense industry sites such as the submarine yard at Barrow in Furness. In northwest Britain. At the same time, former NATO official William Alberk, who now works at the Stimson Center, said that this sample is only a small part of the hundreds if not thousands, of targets mapped across Europe. 
Russia's ability to strike across Europe means targets across the continent will be at risk once the Russian military engages NATO forces in the Baltics and Poland, analysts and former military officials say. Their concept of war is total war. They see these things as potentially victorious weapons. They will want to use them, and they will want to use them fairly quickly, said Jeffrey Lewis, a professor at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies in Monterey. Tactical nuclear weapons have a shorter range and are less destructive than the large strategic ones intended to attack the United States. However, they can still release significantly more energy than those dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima in 1945.